Good evening and welcome to the SEMLEP Define Your Career Construction Broadcast. This session will last for 60 minutes and will include a speaker presentation followed by a panel discussion and Q&A. This session will help you to learn more about the variety of different careers available in the construction industry. Question for today's speaker can be submitted by the Q&A function on the right hand side of your screen and this will be open throughout the session. I'm delighted to welcome our first speaker, Paul Thompson, Education and Skills Manager with SEMLEP. Paul, over to you for your presentation. Thanks very much and good evening everybody and welcome. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through um, the uh, presentation on construction uh, to give you an insight into the different kind of um, opportunities that this presents. Um, we are talking about the area of the Southeast Midlands and, and my role within the Southeast Midlands Local Enterprise Partnership is, is for skills um, within the area. And the area is, is quite a large area. It's Bedfordshire, Luton, Milton Keynes, Northamptonshire. About 870,000 people are employed in the area. And the job vacancies are sitting currently about 213,000 a year. Uh, it's one of the highest it's actually been for, for a long, long time. Um, employment in the area has been good um, and has been on the increase. Um, the latest figures we have are up until 2020. We are expecting a, a small dip in 2021, but on the whole, it, it's looking a lot more positive than I think most people thought it would do. Um, we have one of the highest employment rates in the country. So that means you know number of people working who could work. Um, so that that's good news. So that shows there's plenty of jobs out there for people. It's right across the patch. So it's in all the different areas that we actually have, uh, and it's been steadily increasing. A little bit flatter in West Northamptonshire and Northampton that area, um, but still quite high, uh, which which is good. And in fact, in some places like Milton Keynes, we actually have more jobs than working age population. Um, and so, you know, it's a very buoyant area. Uh, it remains so, and it will continue to do so in the future. So what we're saying here is we've basically got high levels of employment. Well, does that mean you're going to walk into a job? No, it doesn't. Um, there's lots and lots of things you've got to do uh, to, to make that happen. Um, we'll touch on some of those later on. In terms of job postings, so job postings, in other words, for job vacancies, uh, we track uh, the job vacancies that we can see online through lots of different systems. Um, there was a decline in line with the national picture uh, up until the beginning of 2020 when we started to see uh, a rise again and that peaked in March 2020 and then you know what hit um, and kind of slowed everything down. Um, but I'm pleased to say that it is recovering at a ridiculously fast rate at the moment. Um, we have had more job vacancies in the last five months than we've had since 2018. And it's currently over 50% higher than it was at that peak back in March 2020. So there's a lot of jobs out there. Um, and you'll see there the reference to some of the sectors that are really buoyant. So healthcare, education, digital, manufacturing, logistics. Um, but one of the key ones for us is construction. And that's why we were keen to talk about it tonight. So if we actually look at what size the construction sector is, it contributes about 8% of the employment within the area. Um, so it's, it's a big percentage, over 67,000 people employed within it. Um, and lots and lots of kind of roles and opportunities within that. And I would say if you get chance, go to the Go Construct website. Um, great website to actually give you an introduction as to the kind of jobs and functions that are available within the sector. Um, there's a cute little video there that will just take you through as an introduction to start with. Um, the job vacancies actually in construction uh, have been on the increase. Uh, it's quite a dramatic um, graph, um, but you can see the kind of pace of increase of, of demand and need at the moment. Um, lots of different reasons for this. Yeah, certainly we've got lots of positive impacts, impacting factors in the area. There are some large construction programmes, things like the HS2 rail, the Oxford Cambridge rail link will start to come through the area and there's already there's work across in Milton Keynes, for example, already happening on that and that will carry on across through Bedfordshire. Um, lots of housing being built. Um, there were original targets in the Oxford Cambridge arc um, to actually build a million houses. I mean, that's been reviewed, but there'll still be a lot of houses going up. 
and lots of industrial building as well. Um, so, you know, that, that will continue. Um, there's very few places that you'll go these days where you will not see some building or construction someplace or other. You will have heard a lot in the news recently about the green economy um, and net zero and things like that. That will actually have a big impact on the construction sector going forwards. So there'll be lots of opportunities in lots of different roles, uh, trades, design, digital, all kinds of different jobs. A lot of these jobs will be jobs that will change slightly from traditional jobs. So, you know, anything to do with energy and the infrastructure to help support that. Um, leaving the EU has had an impact as well. That's left some gaps um, and some need. Um, and so, you know, that needs to be filled. Um, there is also a shift within the industry in terms of the way things are going to be made and built. Um, so modern methods of construction is a phrase that you might come across. Uh, a lot of that is actually building houses in factories. They're not obviously whole houses and put them on the back of a lorry. Um, it's modular build. So it, it's, it tends to be panels or kind of pods, et cetera, which are then assembled on site. And we're going to see a lot more of that kind of going forwards. And the other bit of big impacting factor is our location. We couldn't be any better place as a location if we tried. Right in the centre of the country, uh, lots and lots of jobs in this area because of that, especially around logistics and these people, these people need places to live. So they need houses um, and also we're very close to London. So we have that advantage as well. Um, and so, you know, things are looking really, really positive for the construction sector going forward. So lots and lots of opportunities. Now, there's lots of different types of jobs within the sector, uh, and this is a breakdown of the job vacancies by those what we call occupational groups. Uh, you'll see there the construction trades, and I'll explain a bit more about what we mean by that in a moment, are about a quarter of those jobs. But then you've got some supporting functions like business operations, uh, digital, the kind of management side, security, financial, all that kind of thing uh, to actually help support the businesses. Engineering is a big chunk at 10% as well. Uh, Labourers um, to actually help and support on site um, and, that, and that kind of thing. So there is there is really generally something for everybody um, within this sector um, going forwards. And the money's not bad either. Um, you know, if we actually look at a breakdown of the jobs that have been advertised in the last uh, year, uh, most jobs have been advertised between 20 to 40,000 um, pounds and a good percentage above that as well. Um, so again, there are some fantastic jobs. There is some good earning potential within this sector, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, you should never be motivated by money, but it's there, it's there. So here's a list of some of the kind of top roles that we see advertised in the area. I mentioned the trades, uh, and that means things you know, where there is a skill to, to do something, if you like. So carpentry, plumbing, kind of stonemasons you see there. Uh, the HVAC, that's, that's heating, ventilation and air conditioning, uh, mechanical installers, that kind of thing. Electricians, huge demand for those trades at the moment. Uh, but you'll see within this list a whole bunch of other roles. Um, drivers is, is a particular need as well. You know, there's management roles within here, civil engineers. You'll see things in here like chefs, which might come as a bit of a surprise. Um, but, you know, if you've got people working within these facilities, within head offices, things like that, they need feeding. Um, so, you know, there's all these kind of different roles. You'll also see some educational roles within this. Um, we have lots of good educational paths, which I'll talk about in a moment. And other kind of specialist roles, so certainly financial roles like bookkeeping, accountancy, buyers and purchasing, procurement people, um, big, big need for, for people like that, and surveyors as well. Um, and again, just to give you some idea of the number of job vacancies against some of these roles, um, this again is the last 365 days, so this was done on Monday. Um, so you can see that construction helpers and workers over those 365 days, we've had 1400 job adverts for, for roles within that. Civil engineers, 1300. Electricians, you can see we have a huge demand for 1200 there and so forth. So th there's lots and lots of opportunities. COVID-19 and leaving the EU has had an impact. We've seen a huge increase in demand on the trades. So painters, plumbers, carpenters in particular, uh, we've seen a massive increase in, in need. Now, potentially these are jobs for life. 
um, and they are jobs with potential of kind of running your own business ultimately. Um, so they have a lot of potential kind of going forward. So that, again, plenty of opportunity there. One thing that does come back, and we, we, we speak to hundreds of employers, is the need for employability skills. So qualifications on their own are not enough. There are a whole bunch of other assets and attributes that you need. One of the main kind of groups are core competencies, and these are the kind of skill sets that you see kind of listed there. Communication skills always comes number one. Uh, doesn't matter which kind of occupational group or which kind of sector that we're working in. But you know, teamwork, collaboration, being detail orientated, that means actually taking a bit of pride and passion and care in what you actually do, and making sure you do it right. Um, organizational skills, planning, problem solving, and you might be surprised to see computer literacy in there. That basically means Microsoft Office, um, and I'll touch on that again in a second. Then you get to these specialist skills, you might call them technical, vocational, job specific skills. Uh, these relate to some of the occupations that I've shown before. Biggest one that comes up though is customer service. Making sure that you look after your customers, you treat them politely, you, know, you do the things you say you're going to do, uh, all those kind of things. It's one of the big key factors in this sector. If you're good at that, then, then you will be made. Um, you'll get re repeat business, you'll get recommendations. Um, there'll be lots of, again, chances to actually expand if it's your own business or, or get extra work that way. And I mentioned digital. Uh, these are the top digital skills that kind of come out of the sector and you see the top three are actually from Microsoft Office. Uh, so Microsoft Office itself is actually in there as well. But Microsoft Excel and Word are used quite a bit um, within the sector. Uh, so it's you know, get your Microsoft Office skills up to a certain standard uh, before you leave education. It, it's, it's a great asset to have going forwards. There's some other specialist stuff there like AutoCAD for design. Um, software engineering is programming, SQL is a programming language, as is Microsoft C Sharp, but there'll be very specialised roles within the sector. The good news is we've got plenty of pathways you can take into the sector. Um, all of our colleges offer construction courses of one sort or another. Um, we've just put a lot of money into some of these facilities uh, to actually make sure they've got some of the top um, assets uh, in the country and Bedford College only a, a couple of weeks ago launched their new modern methods of construction facility as well. Uh, Barnfield College has got a new build on the go at the moment so there will be some nice new shiny facilities there coming soon. Um, so there's again some lots of good pathways through our colleges and then when we get to the kind of higher skill levels our universities offer uh, opportunities certainly for surveying and architecture. Um, there are independent training providers who can also offer um, support as well and this is various different pathways so they might be classroom based um, with a lot of kind of industrial placement but also apprenticeships uh, and we are seeing an increase now of, of apprenticeships coming through great way of learning you boss getting paid um, and gaining a whole set of skills along the way so lots of different pathways to have a go at there's plenty of places you can actually go like find a job um, find an apprenticeship as well as a website to actually have a look at. Um, you can go on the um, Semlet website as well, and that will show you where some of the vacancies are. So some other kind of useful kind of websites and places to go. Um, and we'll make sure these slides are available on our um, on our website at the end of this. So I mentioned the Go Construct website. It's a great place to start. Um, lots of good information on there uh, and videos and all kinds of content. Prospects, another good place to actually have a look. Some nice kind of clear, succinct um, definitions of the roles. Uh, I could is a database of videos um, and again, quite inspirational videos of that. So again, there's you can actually kind of just see what the kind of roles involve, what people say about them. National Career Service, um, if you look at this presentation and take some of the job roles and enter them into the National Career Service database, you can get an idea of the pathways, but also an indication of salaries uh, and that kind of thing as well. And there'll be a better description of all the roles. Um, so again, worth a look. And have a look at our local colleges and university websites. Uh, there's lots of information there. Um, and people will be only too willing to talk to you if you're kind of on those steps to transition to going into kind of a, a different career. 
So this information will appear on our um, labour market information web page. Um, always going to put hash define, hashtag define your career and you'll be able to find us as well. Uh, I hope that's been useful and I hope that's going to set the scene for the, the rest of the discussion this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so much, you so much Paul. Paul. That was great for the students to hear about opportunities within the green economy, um, different types of jobs and roles and some that they may not expect linked to construction and also how to develop their employability skills. And I know that skills is something we're going to focus on with the panel as well later on. Um, so it's time for us to meet our panel now and um, we're going to post their biographies so you can have a read about them as we introduce them as well. So first up we want to hear about our panel's pathways into their career and we're going to start off with Emma so please could you tell us about your career pathway to your current role. Hi um, so I started um, working to, within the, the start of my working career which was for a conveyancing channel and that's where um, people that are buying land have to do specific legal searches but I tended to find that I was more interested in the result of those searches than I was actually expediting them and getting those the results back to those solicitors so I moved across to some opportunities I found in the construction industry initially I worked for a timber frame company um, then I moved on to a plumbing and mechanical company um, which I learned an awful lot from about reading drawings and about the internal parts of, of construction but what I really found that I liked was if I if I drove past a building that I knew had some work that I'd been part of, I really, really enjoyed it. So I moved across to working for a, a brickwork contractor and I really, really loved being part of a project that was um, from a hole in the ground to uh, the roof on the top. And while I was there, I completed a CITB apprenticeship in um, construction contracting operations, which is a, um, a quite technical apprenticeship. And um, I did that up to level three, but it does progress on. And I really found that when um, CITB came out to see me, I found that support really beneficial. And I really liked how they supported people into the industry. And then I started using those skills with some brickwork apprenticeships we had. And when an opportunity came up to work for CITB, I snapped it up so that I could put a bit back. I have worked in the apprenticeships um, directorate for five years but I've moved across now and I work in employer engagement which means that I advise over an awful lot of construction not just in apprenticeships and that's kind of how I got where I am now. Thanks so much Emma. Next we'll move on to Sally if you could tell us about your role and your pathway to it. Absolutely thank you Charlotte. Um, so my role is business development manager for a big main contracting business called Morgan Sindel. And my career, interestingly, did not start in this industry. Um, when I left school, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, actually. And um, I had an opportunity that presented itself in the form of uh, an apprenticeship. At the time, I joined a, a retail sales uh, organisation in the travel and leisure industry, and I went down the MVQ route. So that really helped with core competencies, customer service, that became a bit industry specific and uh, very quickly um, progressed up into in the management kind of uh, uh, regime there. Um, and it, my transition into construction was was purely by coincidence, really, and just it, it was just an opportunity that presented itself. Someone that was a family friend had suggested that uh, they needed someone with my core skills to come into the industry with a, a fresh pair of eyes and look at how how we could really sort of, you know, with the sales skills, look at how we grow the business in construction. So um, we had a, we had quite a lengthy discussion. My dad and my father is actually an uh, electrical engineer by background, but that never kind of influenced my career path when I was younger. So this is when I was in my early 20s and um, so construction has always interested me. Uh, we've always done lots of DIY at home and we've always been quite hands on with helping with that. So the intrigue was there. And when those kind of discussions unfolded, um, I said, well, why not? And um, so I joined a uh, fit out contractor based in London at the time. 
uh, in a junior role and uh, really just learned about the industry as I went. I had a great mentor, which was super. And um, my um, the company I worked for at the time also very much supported with my aspiration. So during that time, they also uh, paid for my degree in marketing, which I did two evenings a week whilst working. So um, I then did that for a number of years to achieve my Chartered Institute of Marketing and really the, my progress. So as my technical knowledge developed, because I was in a non-technical role, I very much worked in the pre-construction field. So that's the bit before we really get onto site. And that's actually quite a fundamental part of, of um, actually getting a project uh, out of the ground and onto site. So that's working with the winning work team, um, customer engagement, all kinds of things like that. And over the last 20 years, I've really progressed my career in that role and working and to the position I have now. So, so in a nutshell, um, going back to what Paul said earlier, core competencies kind of really have been what leveraged um, my position into this industry and where I am now. Thank you so much. It's really great to to hear that you switched industry as well. And I think it's really reassuring for some students who might not know what they want to do and um, to be able to see their career as a journey and that they can they can switch industry. Um, next, we'll move on to Samina. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, my name is Samina Chowdhury. I'm a community investment manager for Waits, which is a construction company. Um, I've been at Waits for six years and it's the only construction company that I've worked for. But previous to that, I did my A-levels um, and I started working in recruitment. Um, more of an agency recruitment, so apprenticeship recruitment. And yeah, just like um, Sally really, by chance, I thought, oh, actually I saw this role. Um, the company sounds great. Um, I'll apply for it. And I got into weights and realise that actually within construction there's so many different roles that are available. I did the same thing within weights so I did um, I was at the early careers recruiter at weights and then as I was recruiting for all these roles I was like oh there's so many different roles that are available within this within the industry. Came across um, the CSR role so community investment advisor manager role and I was like yeah that that's a bit of me and I was like I'm, I need to be that's what I need to be doing. Um, and that's how I found my passion and probably the role that I'm going to be in until I retire now. So, yeah, really kind of a different, interesting pathway into construction, um, but really kind of just shows that you don't know the roles until you kind of explore them and see them. Thanks, Samina. I'm hoping later during the broadcast we can shine a light on some of the roles that the students might not have heard of and actually find really exciting to get to know about. Um, so next we will move on to our industry insights so we can learn a lot more about the industry and um, so we'll move to Emma and we would like to know what do you enjoy most about your role? Um, what I enjoy most about my role is helping people who wouldn't necessarily have completed their apprenticeship um, and helping them through but also helping companies that uh, might not have the the ability to put somebody through. So if it's a small company, they might not have the financial resources and they might not have the time to sit down and work on those competency skills. They're on site all the time and they they need the work to be done. They don't necessarily have the time to invest in those sort of softer skills of, you know, interviewing and um, the Microsoft Office skills that could require developing at young age. So that's where CITB comes in. We do a lot of research with construction, um, and we do uh, a lot of funding and investment projects. And so making sure that we overcome obstacles to get people into training in construction. So if there's somebody that is facing a problem, they can come to us and we will work out a way to help, whether that be the student, the employer, the training provider. You know, the idea is that we are there to overcome obstacles and get more people into the industry. Yeah, so already it seems like problem solving is an important skill in your role. Yes, it certainly is. Listening and uh, problem solving and also signposting, making sure that people know the right places to go. So making sure you know how to research is very important. Thanks, Emma. Um, Sally, we'll move to you next. Uh, we would like to know, I know you switched industries, so what attracted you most to work in the construction industry? As I said, I think my, my dad kind of to an extent had a slight influence on that. Um, however, um, 
buildings just have always fascinated me. Um, you know, particularly some of the heritage buildings, because not began not forgetting that what we do in our industry is not always about building new ones, but it's refurbishing and retaining the heritage of existing estates. So, you know, you just have to look at some of the fantastic uh, buildings, you know, in some of our major cities and, you know, look at how beautiful they are. And so, uh, you know, when you think about the built environment, it's more than just uh, building new facilities and estates, uh, well, you know, or, or schools or universities, it, it's much, much wider than that. And so when when it, when you kind of sit back and look at that, it's uh, and I, my son now, I, in fact, he, he he has a sort of a bit of a um, he has a passion for the same. He, we love to watch the engineering projects. You know, I've always been fascinated. How on earth do they get that bridge across that huge span of of sea? And how does it stay up? You know, there's kind of cryptic questions that always kind of cross your mind as to well, how did they do that? And and that's actually quite a complex set of skills. You know, there's uh, and, and you know planning, you know calculations, engineering. Uh, you know that uh, you know in our industry, you, you kind of need to think, take a seat back, and go. Well, actually, that's you know that takes quite a lot of complex planning, and that's a key part of what we do. So I think it's always been sort of well, how did they do that? You know, we can always you know we've been to. You know, we can see buildings like the Eiffel Tower and think, wow, how does that, how does it, how did it get so tall and how does it not fall over? Um, you know, things we've always asked ourselves as children. So I think there's a combination of things there that kind of really, really, uh, you know, attracted me to the industry. And and actually they, they still firmly resonate with me now because I'm impressed every time I visit our sites about some of the challenges that we, we face in construction right now. And it, and it really is a, a superb industry to be part of. Thanks so much, Sally. Next, we'll move to Samina and we'd like to know what does a typical day in your role look like? Yep, so I'd probably say no day is the same. So um, as a community investment manager, um, I, I love my role because it's so varied. So one day I could be going into a school, doing a presentation around careers in construction or holding mock interviews. The next day I could be kind of um, working on a community project. So that might be for trying to find volunteers within our organisation um, to do uh, I don't know, some gardening or planting trees. So um, hosting work experience placements, helping people find apprenticeship programmes. Um, so it is really varied, but I guess what my passion is, is really to try and get young people um, into roles within construction or just into roles which they kind of really, really enjoy. So yeah, I'd probably say no two days are the same. Um, but what I love about my role the most is that I really feel like um, there's 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 a positive impact to kind of what we do. Thank you. I think it's really good for the students to hear that no two days are the same. I think that often excites them when they're hearing about careers. Um, so we did speak earlier about how the students today will learn about new roles that they may not have heard of before. Um, so Emma, we'll start with you and um, Samina and Sally, please do add to this as well. Emma, could you tell us about a few roles in the industry or if you could just think of one that the young people listening today may never have heard of that they might be excited by? Um, yes, there's a couple that I've got there that I think are some of the more interesting roles. Um, one's Steeplejack and the other is lightning conductor and they they are fairly similar roles but they're where you scale large buildings so when you do need to do maintenance and repairs on large buildings or need to do something like um, add a ladder onto a huge church spire or something like that or um, do some work to to survey things like a power station cooling towers people need to go up and scale those buildings. They, they literally need to go up, make sure it's safe and hang off it and have a look. And they need to know how long they're able to do that for, exactly what they're looking for, and that they're doing it safely as a team. And they need to be able to get materials there, work alongside large plants such as cranes. So I think they are really good roles that you wouldn't consider. You wouldn't look at a building and consider that people do that. And actually there's not very many um, steeple jacks and lightning conductors so that's a, a great role to be sort of looking more into but there are actually I do have the top four at the moment of the um, most investment going into construction roles and good ones to look at that are really needed across the whole of the nation and that's brick 
um, but it's cladding as well. So if people are looking at cladding, that's another one. Retrofit, which is like Sally was um, talking about, which is when we are looking at existing buildings and perhaps making existing buildings more efficient, um, uh, maintaining them really well, making them more, more modern technology included in them. And dry lining as well, that's something that uh, another area that there's a lot of heavy investment in at the moment. Thanks. And um, Sally, do you have any other careers to add to that? Yeah, it's interesting that Emma kind of touched on the on the retrofit uh, facet, really. And um, uh, although it's, this is quite a common, it's not unusual, but I think the role is changing in design management and also uh, things like in proposals management. So those kind of roles where we're very much uh, embracing the net zero carbon and having to look at how things are designed differently to meet the, those challenges. So I think there's really um, some some new skills uh, and we talk about the green skills, I think Paul mentioned, actually, um, that's something that's a big challenge for our industry right now. And, you know, we are massively embracing that in all the new buildings that are being built, um, but actually in the existing structures, existing buildings and retrofitting, that's a massive part. And there's lots of roles in and around that that whole area, and I mentioned design management as one of them, uh, but it's really quite uh, quite key. Um, I mentioned another role, um, document controller, and it kind of is a little bit um, uh, exactly as it says on the tin, uh, and that is you are keeping, and it's a really important function, and I think that's a really great route into our industry from uh, sort of an apprenticeship level, sort of if you're not sure if you want to move into a technical role, but if you've got really good administration skills, uh, it plays an absolutely fundamental part in supporting our site teams and our design management teams in making sure that uh, the, you know, there's robust sort of storage and updating teams of all the correct drawings about what we're building in construction. And, that, and that's just one facet of it. So I think that's really kind of important that um, those business support roles in our industry are kind of, you know, don't underestimate the opportunity. We all businesses, irrespective of uh, the industry, need um, support functions like HR, business development, graphic design, um, proposals management, finance, accounting. They're all core core needs for any business and don't underestimate that that opportunity that exists in this industry and it's often a gateway so uh, I mentioned a couple which which might not be as sort of unique but I, I think they kind of are important and changing right now and, and for the young people coming into industry it's certainly an opportunity to embrace it. Thanks so much. We're, we're halfway into the broadcast and I think between all of you we've already listed at least 15 different careers that the students might not have heard of before so that's really great. Um, Sally will stay with you for the next question. We'd really like to know how your industry is growing and I know Paul, um, Paul touched on this and where you see it developing in the next five to ten years. Construction, I mean, it's fair to say construction industry spend is 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 growing and continue to growing and in particularly in the region, it, it's it's significant. Um, we've got um, place making in terms of new houses and new homes. And with that growth, you also get, you know, the, the need for things like schools, community facilities and all of and exactly as Paul said earlier, you know, when you bring when construction comes into a region, those people often like to live locally and they need homes and things like that to build so it's it it's really it's really growing um the public sector continues to spend massively in the area um and yeah it's it's a, it's a fantastic industry and we've got a big challenge as we said with net zero carbon so the green skills is absolutely key um I, you may hear me say it a couple of times but i can't, don't underestimate the skills that are needed um, and also what we've got is a what we've got as an industry is, a, is an aging population um so we've got people that are coming to retirement in our industry we really need to replace those skills and we need to sort of think outside of you know we need to think of it construction and industry that's accessible to everybody um, with so many roles and support functions uh, as part of that as well as the site and trade management surveying skills so yeah it's a it's it it's growing it's growing and it will continue to grow and we've got connectivity as Paul said you know Oxford Cambridge Arc we've got infrastructure big infrastructure coming into the region 
um, uh, you know, with connectivity in the train. And yeah, it's it, it's it's a it's a growing piece. It's a big opportunity. I would say it's a very stable industry uh, to join. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. We're definitely making the construction industry sound really appealing to the students. Um, Samina, we'll move on to you next. We would really like to know about some of the misconceptions that people might have about your industry and what you would like to say to demystify some of the misconceptions. And again, um, if others would like to add to this, please do. Um, unfortunately, there's quite a few misconceptions that surround the construction industry. I mean, the main one that we try to tackle um, at Waits is um, kind of the, um, a lot of people think that construction, when you think of construction, they think of um, it's kind of a male dominated industry, which actually it is, but we're trying to do a lot more to make sure that there are more um, females joining the industry. So I think it's 14% of females currently working in the construction workforce. Um, so it's trying to kind of break down those barriers, those general misconceptions that people might have um, before applying. And what we're seeing is actually um, um, that number has increased. So we are getting more females into the industry as in, in into the industry um, year on year. Um, I know at Waits as well, we're kind of our early careers programs, so apprenticeships, graduate opportunities, Predominantly, the the, 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 the um, kind of it's very much fifty percent female, if not higher. So we can see that it's changing, um, but there's still kind of a long way to go to try and get to that kind of um, fifty fifty mark in the industry as well. But that's one of the main main misconceptions that I think um, the industry needs to try and kind of do a lot more work on. We're doing a lot anyway, but try and get more, make it a bit more diverse. If I might add, Samina, as well, I think you're absolutely right. Um, what I think people often think of is that construction industry is just about the trades on site and it's about being in mucky environments all day. And absolutely, that is one facet because we have got to physically build uh, buildings. But actually, um, and this, this may be a surprising sort of uh, figure for you, but the pre-construction team, so people that will plan design, uh, cost plan and work out how much a project will cost before it build, is built. That period of time and that amount of resource can take up between nine and 11 months and sometimes longer when there's planning issues. So depending on the roles, you know, there is kind of quite a significant uh, in, um, number of jobs in that area. And it's, so it's not all just about the mucky site boots. Construction is a management profession um, and um, there are lots of great opportunities out there and that's a significant amount of people employed in that environment in some of the big construction companies in the region. I'll just put, put uh, another spin on that as well. Um, so it's great saying about the females that are in construction because over 90 percent of females in construction are in quite high powered roles as well which is good to know if you're female and you're thinking about joining the industry that there are you know it's not it's not that you're just going in at an entrant level the opportunities are there right up at the top but also a lot of people in construction tend to think there's not a lot of progression you know they tend to think you go in you do an apprenticeship and and when you finish, you are a qualified, particularly in the trades, you're a qualified tradesperson. And then that's it. You do that trade for forever and you only progress in the office side of things. But actually to, to be your own boss is also, if that's something that appeals to you, it's one of the best industries to enter. There's lots of PAYE opportunities, but there's also a lot of opportunities to be your own boss. And then your progression could, could be tenfold. You could, you know, you could have um time off when you want to have time off you can have staff but you can also have subcontractors so when you are feeling like you want to take on massive projects you can do that and then but you can also manage lots of small projects so it's not just about somebody who has um you know wants to be having time working all the time in an office or working all the time on site but also about people that want to, to be their own boss and want to um to invest back into their local community there's an awful lot of people it's not just very cutthroat it's not people that just want to go on site all the time and and um yeah it is about your local opportunities as well 
Thanks so much. I think it's really important for the students to hear about some of the misconceptions in the construction industry. And as we can see tonight, we have a panel of all females, which I think is really important for the students to see. Um, also known about the, the fact that you can be your own boss and that it isn't just about wearing your muddy wellies as well. I think it's important, so thank you. Um, Emma, we'll stay with you for the next question. And again, this one is for all of you, so please do feel free to add on. Um, we would like to know about some of the apprenticeship opportunities available to the students in construction. OK, in the area, there's actually quite a lot of construction opportunities at the moment. So um, there's an awful lot in Northamptonshire right now that are very high powered, sort of degree level opportunities as well as trades. I find at the moment that some people are moving across to uh, other areas of the South East Midlands for college capacity because actually it's really popular this year to go into construction. Um, there are some shared apprenticeship schemes as well, but there's some new um, trade opportunities like dry lining that hasn't previously been delivered in the area. So we're working with a lot of federations to look at trends in the area that's of needed trades, whether that be office based or site based trades. And then we're going to put them uh, work with federations to make sure that they're available more locally. There's quite a few trades where you have to travel quite far to learn them. Uh, so we're investing at the moment. Um, if people are interested in apprenticeships, uh, the website that Paul said Go Construct is really good for information and they can also use the Talent View Construction um, website to look for. There's current jobs there at the moment that are live and there's also lots of companies on there that have micro sites you can have a look at and learn a bit more about those industries and those opportunities. Thanks Sally, um, if you would like to add anything to that. Um, no, I mean, I think it's right to sort of, you know, look at both the trade and degree apprenticeship opportunities because they really offer different routes into the industry for different people with different skills. Um, you know, there are some people that like that, that practical route. Um, I want to ha have a trade, a hands on trades and those that perhaps, you know, want to want to take a more management route into the industry. So, yeah, lots of lots of opportunities. Um, I think there's some uh, there's some data out there are current vacancies posted by sector on uh, on something that Paul's got in the region. Again, they're significant and it, it's it's growing and it's interesting. Emma mentions about dry lining. My husband works for a dry lining organisation and you're absolutely right about those uh, uh, those trade skills are not being accessible kind of as locally as we'd like and the need for for that to, to grow as a trade really. So, yeah, it's, you know, great, great opportunities. And Samina, we'll go to you if you'd like to add anything to that. Yeah, um, I'd probably just add that at the moment, um, a lot of companies are probably advertising like just just like weights are for their higher and degree apprenticeship opportunities now for a start next year in September. So um, a lot of the, I guess, larger companies do their recruitment annually. So it's definitely worth checking out all of those websites that were just mentioned, as well as the apprenticeship website. But trying to do that um, before kind of the window closes. So it's essentially it's aligned with um, how you would apply for a university, um, uh, how you would apply for university through UCAS, you would apply for, the pre for a higher and degree apprenticeship programme in, in, in a similar way. Thanks, Amina. And um, you've just brought up applications, so we're going to stay with you for the next question. We've had a question come in from a student. Um, the student is called Hope, and they would like to know um, some top tips on creating an application form for a role in your industry in construction. Yep. So um, I would probably say um, my top tips for an application form is to spend some time on it. So I think people think oh, it's the first stage of the application form. Um, I'm just going to kind of quickly rush through it, but actually it's probably the, the most important because it's going to get you through to kind of the next stages as well. Um, general application forms, they will ask you things like your contact details, um, your email addresses. So just basics, just make sure that you put the correct um, contact details on there in the first place, because sometimes we get that we call and then we can't get anyone answering or we just get voicemails. Um, using a professional email address, um, checking or getting someone to check to see if there's any kind of grammar grammar mistakes or anything like that. Um, but another quick top tip that and we find is where people lose the most marks is 
if we do ask you a question, so in our weights application, we ask, you know, what is it that interested you in weights? And then in brackets, we might have 300 words. Try to stick as much as possible. That really is a hint about how much content you should really be writing there. Sometimes we will just get like a sentence or a few bullet points. And um, so these questions do get marked. So it just means that you're not you're you're not um, kind of using that to the most of your advantage. So yeah, use that as a hint, and that kind of will show you how much content you need to be writing. I would probably say um, a good application will probably take you about an hour, um, 45 minutes to an hour, if not longer, depending on how long the application is and definitely get someone to have a look through it just to double check. Um, just to double check that there are any kind of grammar or spelling errors, not that I think it will stop you from getting to that next stage necessarily, um, but it's just to kind of show you that you're kind of putting your best foot forward as well. Obviously, also check the website because um, a lot of the information that you might need on the application form will be on the website. Understand the role that you're applying for as well and make sure that comes across. Thanks, Amina. There were some really good top tips for the students listening. It was really useful. Thank you. And of course, after the application form, if we're lucky enough, comes the interview. So Emma, we'd love to know your top tips for an interview in the construction industry. Um, definitely research, like Tamina said, definitely do your research on the company and the role that you're doing. Um, but don't go in there thinking, particularly if you're a young person, this is my first job, I don't have any experience. There's so much more to a role than previous work experience. So things like if you've been in a sports team or you have leadership skills from a project that you've done, um, or, or like uh, Paul said earlier about being a person who pays good attention to fine detail, think about who you are and what you can bring to that role, why you're right for that role. Um, and try and remember the points that they're after. So if they've listed points that they're looking for, try and address each point that they've said they're looking for and apply that about yourself. And also, wear some smart clothes. <laughs> yeah, definitely always helps. <laughs> Your first impressions. Sally, we'll move to you next for the next question. Um, so we would like to know um, if you would recommend that students contact organisations for work experience in order to develop their skills and also how students can make the most of the opportunities um, when they're at their work experience. Absolutely, I think our, our industry is quite broad in terms of the employment opportunities. So I think dipping your toe into taking advantage of work experience will really kind of widen your horizons. Um, uh, from my experience of having work experience students working uh, in, the, in, our, in our business is that we've often created an opportunity for them to spend some time in different parts of the uh, function of the business and I think that kind of also uh, is particularly if you're, you're not really sure about what the industry means um, and what are all these other roles that are not on site or what the site roles are it really kind of gives gives you a flavour of, of what the industry can offer so I think yes definitely if you know take the work experience opportunity because that might help shape deciding actually I really really quite find this quite interesting and actually it might surprise you because uh, that is a massive correlation between you know students that love their STEM subjects and how that moves into our industry um, so take advantage of some work experience and maybe something that sort of resonates with you and actually goes yes I really want to take I really want to move into this industry or it might be something that actually informs you actually it's not it's not for me it's not what I'm looking for so think of it as an opportunity to embrace knowledge and help you with your decision making and take every advantage uh, available to you uh, whilst you're there um, show that you're um, you know you're dedicated you can uh, work as a team ask questions don't be afraid to ask questions but we'd love it when people ask questions about what do we do and how do we do it and and I don't understand and and it's absolutely fine to say I don't know or I don't understand because actually that's we're not expecting you to this is part of us sharing uh, sharing sort of the industry and our business with you to kind of give you uh, a, a, that opportunity to understand the industry and hopefully encourage you to to, to join that uh, join the industry so take advantage maximize the opportunity i'd say um don't discount the industry um give it a go and um do, you know do, do a bit of a uh, bit of everything on your work experience opportunity 
Thanks so much. I think that really does take the pressure off the, the work experience opportunity. If the students can think I'm, I'm doing this to see if I like the industry. Um, Samina, we'll move to you next. We would like to know, is there anything that you'd wish you'd known before you started working in construction? Yeah, I wish I knew about um, how um, exciting an industry it was before we would have joined it a bit earlier. Um, I was totally naive to kind of the industry when I first joined. Um, the different kind of roles that were um, opportunities that were available and if I, I, f I honestly feel like if I had known about it earlier, although I'm, I'm happy being a community investment manager now, um, I would definitely have looked into doing things like site management or uh, being a quantity surveyor, um, just because the routes into these um, roles um, is so planned out. Um, you can get an apprenticeship program and essentially become qualified within five years and even then you're kind of still on a progression route um kind of and your career is kind of already kind of paved out and i really like i really like that kind of um route and i think it's great that construction offers a route like that as well so yeah there's lots that i wish i knew about construction before and hopefully that's why i, I feel so passionate about going into schools and really like explaining um, about the different roles because it could just spark an interest for an industry that no one's really thought about before. Thanks so much. Yeah, I think that your all of your passion for working in construction is really coming across to the students listening today. Emma, we'll move to you next. We would like to know about um, any challenges that you faced in your role um, and how you might have overcome them. Um, the challenges we mainly faced were, uh, well, quite a lot of the time, I don't actually know where I'm going when I'm going to a site visit. That's a massive challenge because there are no postcodes. I cannot go anywhere without my sat nav and there is only so far it can take you. Um, there are lots of problems that we had when we had apprenticeships. For example, apprentices were um, homeless or um, the look that it looked like they weren't going to achieve um, and they did need us to step in and have some um, sort of interventions in place there for them and there is actually an awful lot on offer there um, and we have an, the, the biggest challenge I think I have is that when people are talking about the construction industry the image of the construction industry really is not as good as the construction industry is it has it, the image of being quite a slow changing industry but it isn't there's lots of uh, like we we're saying earlier there's lots of females coming into the industry um, I think one of the best bits of advice I would give to people if they do have preconceptions, which is a big challenge that we have, is to go to a site uh, when there's site tours available. Like Sally said, when you have um, a work experience, make the most of the opportunity and ask for a tour around all of the office so you can see all of the opportunities that are there. Um, because when people join the construction industry, either they previously tend to want to, um, so they come on site and they think this is what they've always wanted to do or they go into the office and then they're there for a little while and they think oh maybe I don't and then you have a dropout and because it's the kind of industry where they recruit largely at one time of year there's then a bit of a gap in the skill set for that company um, which is something that we do struggle with. In the southeast midlands there's quite a few colleges now that have changed and they've adapted to how they deliver their courses and therefore they have intake throughout the whole of the year so if you do feel that you're um you know you've started an apprenticeship and you absolutely hate it there are places you can reach out and transfer over and have a start perhaps in january or easter uh, and that's not really a, an opportunity that's in a lot of places it's really good that it's been picked up in the southeast midlands not just for students but also to protect employers from that so uh, a big challenge would be we have massive skills gaps in the construction industry and we need lots of young people to come in and fill those, um, you know, and and uh, as I said earlier, there's an awful lot of money in the construction industry that's waiting to be earned and a lot of development that's waiting to be had that we just need to get people to come in. Thanks Emma for sharing some of the challenges and yeah I think it's really important for students to know about the skill shortages in the in the industry and how, start to think about how they can how they can fill them. As we draw to a close um, we've got one last question for all of you and we have a student called Daniel who would like to know why choose a career in construction and also if you have any kind of final words of advice that you'd like to say to the students so Emma please could you go first 
Okay, like Paul said earlier, there really is a job for life in construction. There's so many roles, there's so much progression available to you. Um, and that's not just for people with um, that enjoy working with their hands, it's also for people that really like academic work. It's such a varied industry and there is need across the whole of the industry and you really will be leaving your mark uh, on the world. You know, you'll, there will be something, probably something physical that you can look at and think, I had something to do with that, whether you visited the site or you're in the office in the planning team. Um, and then there's other routes for, um, like you say, there's an ageing workforce. There's other routes for if you do get older and you decide you don't want to continue on site, there's an awful lot of other places you can work, such as local councils, um, federations. There's lots of networking opportunities to spread how you work across an industry. And Sally, we'll move to you. Why a career in construction? And final words of advice for the students listening today. I think it's not really that dissimilar to what Emma said, really. Um, you know, it is a, it's a really, it's, it is a career for life. And I think it, it is so, it's lovely to walk past buildings. I think, you know, we, we, I, as, or as a team, we kind of, you know, played a really important part in making that, um, that ma making it happen and there's nothing more rewarding particularly in, in buildings like schools um, you know things that make a difference to people's lives housing and things like that uh, just you know it's it, it's something that's kind of really quite proud um, and you know it, as an industry there'll always be a, a need for building but there'll also be a need for sort of you know looking at retrofitting buildings and looking at the existing uh, existing great buildings that we've got so it's you know it's and the opportunities are so broad um, you know and you know I think some of the best success stories in our own teams that I've worked with now or have worked with previously uh, you know quite people in senior roles have started in trade roles and really progressed and I think as you grow in your career um, there's always opportunities to move within the industry and really harness on that learning and the skills and your and the academic opportunities you take advantage of right now um, you know they are building blocks and they will give you a, a really great career progression. So um, don't discount the industry um, if it's even something that you're kind of not really sure why I'm here today, um, perhaps listening to this. But I think, you know, keep your eyes wide open. Think about the broader picture and the skills and the roles within the industry and, you know, take the opportunity if, if businesses are offering work, offering work experience, you know, grab it with your hands, find out and, and ask the questions. This is about you making, um, you know, ch choices right now, which, um, you know, may influence what, what you do in the future. So, you know, grab every opportunity you can. That would be my top advice. Thanks, Sally. And Samina, the final question to you, please. Yeah, I would just like to like re-emphasise that really in the construction industry, there is um, well, I believe that there is a role for everyone. Um, and just like um, Sally and Emma have said, work experience will really help you um, understand what those different roles are. So you might have a bit of an understanding, but until you go on a construction site, see how it all kind of, all the pieces go together, shadow people that are doing the roles, um, kind of that way you can really see your, maybe see yourself and be like, actually, I, I'm, I'd be good at that. So yeah, really take every opportunity. There's so much um, virtual work experience that is happening at the moment, opportunities wise. So um, try try and do a virtual work placement and um, when it's safe to do so, or if, if it's safe to do so, try and get out on site and do kind of physical work placements as well, because it really will open your eyes to some roles that you might not even thought existed. Um, as well as kind of um, understanding kind of how, how everything pieces together as well. Thanks so much. A huge thank you to all of our speakers today for sharing your experiences about working in construction and letting the students know about the skills that they need to develop. And um, also thank you to Paul for your presentation at the start as well. That was really insightful. We've posted a feedback form in the Q&A thread and it would be great if the audience listening today could complete this. We hope you enjoyed our SEMLET broadcast and they will be available on the SEMLET video library very soon. Thanks everyone, have a great evening.